All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. And we welcome a man who hasn't been on the channel for a little while now. I think you were like my first Skype guest, Anthony, uh, when we did the True Footy podcast over the off-season. A lot's happened since then. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, mate. It's good to be back. It's been a long time since that first F of uh, the potty, so I'm glad yeah. you finally wanted me back. Yeah. Uh, it's good to be back. I had to cycle through uh, all the other high-profile YouTube guests and now, uh, now I'm gagging for content and you're the only bloke who's available, so... <laughs> nah, just kidding, man. I, uh, I obviously want to speak to you uh, in particular at the moment because your team is absolutely flying, man. It's a uh, stark contrast to what it was like when we talked on the podcast some eight months or whatever it was ago, maybe less. Um, I want to know, first of all, what's, been, what's footy been like for you as a fan? I mean, considering Port Adelaide are on top of the ladder as well, but... Also, with the fact that you know COVID's kind of wrecking this season, like what's been your experience? And I know, like I know you still go to the games with Harfield Stadium. What's it been like for you? Generally, like the, the bottom line is, I'm grateful that footy's back. Grateful that we can watch footy, and very pleased to be and even personally playing myself. Um, so I'm very happy in that sense. Uh, I think the experience overall has probably helped that Port are playing such good football at the moment. But I think. Yeah, if you get technical with it, you know, you can pin, pick these little bits and pieces about how footy's been played and different rules and regulations and stuff. But I think overall, as a fan, barring Port Adelaide's good form at the moment, I've, I'm enjoying it. Like, I'm I'm glad that the community's getting around. We're all doing different things. And uh, there's still that little, that little guy that sits on your shoulder with a lot of passion and just gets aggro at everything. So... For me personally, it's just been uh, good fun to even just experience the highs and lows with everyone, which um, we haven't experienced anything like this before. So, yeah, I'm just glad footy's back. Well, there's be a ton of people watching this who are based in Victoria um, who probably haven't been to a game at all this season. How's the match experience, match day experience compared? Because uh, you get to go to Adelaide Oval um, pretty often. You go pretty much every home game at the moment, right? So how's that been? Yeah, um, I've been to, I think, I didn't go on the uh, to the Richmond game, but I've been to the last couple before that and the showdown. Well, the showdown in itself was a completely different experience. Nothing that will... I think the 2,200 people that were there on the night, no one else will get to experience that ever again. Uh, that type of uh, atmosphere, the, the just the feel... I'll, I'll describe it in a way of when it was quiet, dead quiet. Like you could hear the ball uh, hitting the hand when for a handball. Like that's how quiet it was. But 2,000 people, when they were screaming, loud as anything. So, uh, yeah, uh, going to the game, is it's a little bit different um, in the in the sense of that, you know, there's these regulations and uh, you have to f abide by the rules. But once you're there, once you're watching the game, it doesn't feel any different to any normal game you go to. So uh, once you get that aspect out of your head and you're actually watching the footy, you get aggravated, you get... You, know, you get rowdy at the umpires. You get up and about when there's a goal or you know a bad call or something like that. So it's been different, but at the same time, it's also just nice to be back going to the footy. And I'm sure you know over in Perth, you get to do it as well now. And um, people in Queensland have been lucky enough to almost go every week, just about to see all different teams. So I think the people that have attended games so far will definitely uh, agree with the fact that. It's just nice to be sitting there with a pint or with a pie uh, and just enjoying your team or someone else's team play footy. Yeah, that's cool, man. And I'm sure a lot of people uh, who listen to that will be pretty jealous of, uh, of the fact that you get to go as well. But on top of that, man, we touched on it. Your team is top of the ladder, 9-2. and two, Just beat Richmond, 143%. Couldn't really be going too much better. What's it like for you as a fan? Because this probably be the best position Port's been in since about 2000. Or oh, I don't remember 14 exactly, but you know 2004 they won the flag. Like either way, this is one of the most or uh, most successful starts to a season you've ever seen. I'm sure. What's it? What's it been like for you as a fan? Do you know what? It, it's funny. Like I'm, every single week, we're we're top of the ladder. We're beating teams we should, and then we come out and on the weekend we beat Richmond unexpectedly as well as we could have. Um, we could have even pumped them by six or seven goals with the amount of misses we had in that last quarter. So I still go into every week with that little voice in my head thinking, yeah, we're going to lose this. We're going to lose this. <laughs> Game against Melbourne. Yeah, I think we might lose this. Yeah, I tipped Melbourne that week and I'm an exactly. idiot. 
<laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, now you're an idiot. But going into that week, people were like, no, we're the idiots. We're thinking Port are going to lose. You know, it, mm. you just because of the whole experience of 2018, we were sitting four, 15 and four, drop out of the eight. Oh, actually, 11 and four, sorry. We drop out of the eight. And then 2019, up and down. 2017, you lose that first elimination final to a team I will not mention. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, it's it's there's that confidence. I think now the confidence of beating Richmond is like, hell, we're in this now. We're contenders. That pretender tag is gone. Um, we needed to do that against the team and against Richmond, the reigning premiers. There's no other team you can do it. So now I'm like, yeah, why not? We're, I'm confident. Every single week. That's cool, man. I was going to ask you if the lid was off yet because uh, I'm <laughs> sort of like... In my tips videos, I've kind of been like, you know, Port, you know, they've pretty much passed every test, but I haven't seen them really kill a, a contender yet. So I, I feel like you got West Coast at a good time. We were playing horrible. And then Brisbane beat you, but then again, Brisbane's a good team. So, like, I didn't really know what to think about. Now, after this Richmond game, I think I'm, I'm thinking along the lines of you. I'm like, Port actually genuinely are one of the best sides in the competition. Statistically, the best defense, and I think the second best offense. Um, how important do you think amongst other things, but Charlie Dixon this year, fully fit and, you know, starting to reach his potential. How important a cog is he in your forward line? Uh, he is not only the most important forward line player in our list, in our side, he's the most important player in our club, by far. Like, more Ooh, important than words. Boke. More important than... More important than Boke, that's huge for More me. important than Boke, more important than Robbie Gray, more important than the captain, Tom Jonas. He is the most influential person on our list. If he's not playing on the weekend, we lose. If he's not playing against the D's, even, we're going into that game with less confidence than we should. He just has this impact on players. You can see it when even he misses easy goals. You can cop that because he kicks goals like he did from the pocket. That thing bent like nothing yeah, else I've true. seen. True. And you just see like the way he gets around the young kids, the way he's such a great club man. He's the most angry person you'll ever meet, but... He just has that essence of determination and he hits the contest as hard as anyone. I can't remember who, I think it was Jason Dunstall said it in the commentary. He was he just summed it up perfectly. He said, it, no matter what happens to Charlie Dixon in a contest, it's either his or a 50-50. He doesn't lose. When you have someone like that up forward, it's, it kind of reminds me of, you know, like a Matthew Richardson or a Warren Treadray even, you know, just the, his presence alone is just so influential. So the, he's definitely the reason why we're playing as good as we are, definitely why we're up on top of the ladder. And definitely, I think, oh, he's all Australian centre forward at the moment. That's I'm yeah. not even being biased. I think him and Kennedy <laughs> are the two key forwards in the side. So they're the most influential players up forward for their teams. And yeah, Charlie's, <laughs> I love Charlie. Big yeah. dudes, King Charles. You can call him whatever. <laughs> he's just yeah. he's great. He's a scary, big, imposing man as well. I was I was just reading an article before this as well that suggested even just structurally having Dixon in a side allows Robbie Gray maybe to not play as that deep forward, so he pushes back, and then that allows Boak and Wines to really play in position a lot better. So, yeah, on top of playing well, like structurally, there seems to be a lot of advantage to that as well. But aside from Charlie, because it can't just be a one-man show entirely, what else, as a Port man who has closer insight than anyone else um, that doesn't support Port, what do you put the improvement down to this year, if you had to summarise it? There's, I think there's a couple of things. Development of our youngsters, the way they've come into the club as mature as they have been. You look at the improvement of Zach Butters over six months, the end of last year to the beginning of this year, huge. Connor rosie has been consistent without having an influential game. Um, Dersma has been consistent. You know, you got the likes of Boyd Woodcock coming through. Pete Laddams, Pistol Pete's been awesome since True. coming back. Georgiatis. Uh, Georgiatis has been fantastic uh, in glimpses, and then it's just been like the development of Houston, Power Pepper, uh, the likes of Burton when he's in the side. Sam Mays, who was nowhere, comes into the side earlier this season, plays really good football. Trent McKenzie is probably one of our most important defenders right now. After looking like he wouldn't even be on the list at the end of last year. Um, and yeah, it's just the development of those types of players, that middle to bottom tier that just keep it consistent. Carl Amon's another, Kane Farrell. You know, I could list as many as you know, half a dozen that have just 
continually improve their game, but also resilience. I think as a group, we, you know, you look at the game against Richmond, look at the game against Carlton. Um, we, lo we lose those games before this year. We just couldn't get the job done with, with playing good football, but we just wouldn't beat those types of teams. And now we come out, we, you know, you win the game against Carlton where probably you shouldn't have. You beat Richmond who, you know, even though they had a couple out, you know, they're a premiership team and come out and beat them and beat them convincingly. And that so Bulldogs just, game as well where they really challenged yeah. you and you limped over the line, but it was, it was a really, really good win. That was probably the biggest thing as well as the Bulldogs game coming out for four day break. We didn't look anywhere near as good for three quarters and it took one quarter of football to beat the Bulldogs. So it's, yeah, it's just that different dynamic mindset to sum it up really in one word is how I think important we've grown um, over the course of even six months. It's always been there, but I think we've just found a way to keep it there. Yeah, for sure. I, like, yeah, you, you touched on the youth as well. Like, I was, we were adding it up the other day. I think it was on the stream and we, we noticed that Port Adelaide have some of the best youth in the league. And they're a side contending. And it's funny how sometimes like a, just an injection of good young talented players, and it's easier said than done, can really like rejuvenate sort of, because you sort of had an experienced and sort of a little bit inside oriented a few years ago, I think, but maybe not so much like that much speed on the outside. And then you add guys like Rosie, Butters, Dersma, and all those guys you listed as well. And it's just really added a different edge to your team. Yep. Do you think though, as a Port fan, that your side has underachieved big time in the last two years because you touched on it you said I think we were 11 and 4 in 2018 and you lost I think you lost your last seven that's disgusting and then you yeah. lost your last five out of seven to end 2019 and that's that's been another reason why I've been reluctant to really put Port you know really high in my premiership rankings just because I'm always worried about that second half of the season yeah. fade off but um do, do you think you've really underachieved in previous years or do you think you are that much better this year? Since 2014 to 2019, we've underachieved massively. I honestly thought, and I think a lot of people will say it, and I've heard non-Port supporters say it, 2014 was our premiership. Always thought that. If we beat Hawthorne, we're beating Sydney the next week. Um, 20, you know, 2015, 2016... You have that, it's sort of like um, the Bulldogs where they won the flag, then dropped off massively. Now they were still that young side and still developing and they just hit peak a little earlier than people expected. Uh, 2017 come back and then we know what happened that year. I think 2018 was the year. 2018, bring in Watts, Motlop uh, and Rockcliffe. To go 11 and four, sitting pretty in fourth, probably a flag contender. To drop off like that, yeah, 100% we've massively underachieved um, in the last five years. But the, the rejuvenation, I think 2019 should be scrapped from that because we did reset. We got rid of players that we shouldn't have, probably shouldn't have at the time, you know, Wingard, uh, Polek. But then to have those players like Rosie Butters and Dersma come in, I think 2019 was a mini reset, tiny rebuild, and then, yeah come and smashing into 2020 with that youth, but also, you know, Boat, Gray, you know, West off the still playing that quality football and just a full preseason. That's what yeah. we needed and we had it, so. True. This is probably the healthiest you must have been in the last couple of years as well, but. Yeah, I definitely. Mean, the other thing as well, like you, um, I want to ask you, you said in the last podcast with me, you said that you needed uh, Hinkley to not just make the finals, but win a final and you were, not a big Hinkley man at the time. Has he done, well, has he done much to change it? I guess he has, but like, what, what's your view on him now and how's he tracking against that? With Hinkley, you know, you're always going to have that, that same attitude. And I think the one thing with him has always been his message has been pretty consistent, um, which at the time, even me included, you know, you hate to hear the same thing he always says. But I guess now what's happened is with an attitudinal change, with the whole club, 150 years. It's a massive year. We know the expectation on Ken. Ken know, knows where he stands. Finals or bust. Um, you know, I think now with Ken, he's got what he wanted in terms of playing group, structure. That message has been consistent. And he's got that perfect balance in his side. And I think now he knows where he stands. Everyone knows where they stand. And that's probably been the biggest mental shift throughout the whole club and 
that's probably why we're playing better football now than we were 12 months ago. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. Sweet. A um, couple of double prong sort of final question. Mm-hmm. How deep can this team go this year? Um, and who are your biggest threats? So who is the team you least like, like or least want to come up against in finals or, or it can be multiple? Uh, how deep we can go? <laughs> um, after the weekend... All the way. Just on that basis, like, I'm not saying, you know, we're the team to beat. I'm pretty, that type of person that will accept the fact that, yeah, we've beaten Richmond, but I want to see something else. But I think we, with now how this year's gone and how teams drop off and they drop games they shouldn't and all that, and we've been that pretty consistent side, I reckon we can go all the way. Uh, the teams I'm still, oh, Richmond are still the team, one of the teams to beat. Uh, West Coast over there will be the toughest task of them all. And I think I'd like to see us play West Coast again because we got them at their off period. So I'd like to see them match up now and see how we go. Um, I don't know. I think St. Kilda seemed to be a smoky. They beat us a couple of weeks ago. I just, I'd like to see how they go, you know, against the teams like West Coast and et cetera like that. But I don't know if they just caught us off guard or something, but... I think they're getting done by Geelong right now. It's three right. quarter time. Yeah, so they're getting pumped. At least when I last looked at the score. So um, who knows? Maybe they did. They did kick thirteen one on you or something ridiculous like that. Yeah, we couldn't kick straight. That seems to be the standard for us. So yeah, uh, twelve one. Yeah, was, yeah. I don't know. I think yeah, West Coast of Richmond standouts. St Kilda maybe Collingwood if they get their act together. But anyone else, I reckon. Good luck against Port. Good stuff, man. I, I like your confidence. Um, hopefully, <laughs> it's the first uh, time I've had it in a while. Yeah. I can't help it. That's it. Well, I'm happy for you, man. Um, although, <laughs> obviously, if my boys make it deep, I hope we uh, we kill, uh, beat you up with the siren again. That would be pretty fun. Yeah, no, nah, get stuff, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, thank you for joining me on the True Forty YouTube channel. Uh, nah, but seriously, thanks, man, for coming on. Thanks for your time. Um, no for anyone reason. that doesn't know who you are watching this, who well, I'm sure they already do, but go sub to the pair. Makes great content. Big Port Adelaide man. And uh, Anthony, I wish you all the luck for the rest of this season, provided it's not against my boys, of course. Uh, thanks, mate. Look forward to seeing you in the first quality final where we get you uh, <laughs> over the line at, uh, at the Adelaide Oval. Yeah. Well, you have pumped us the last two times you've played the <laughs> Eagles, so uh, I'm actually not looking forward to a Port matchup, but uh, we'll see what happens, mate. <laughs> Uh, well, they haven't been at the Adelaide Oval, that's why. True, true, that's it, that's it. Cool, man. Thanks for your time. I'll catch you later. No worries, guys. Thank you very much.